welcome back to my channel today I wanted to do a video on pros and cons of living in Zimbabwe I've seen a couple of these videos pros and cons of living in Africa and then it has a specific country so I wanted to do one for Zimbabwe and kind of give you some insight on the best parts of living here and the not so great parts of living here I wanted to film this video today because I feel like I have a pretty good perspective on the pros and cons of living here in Zimbabwe. Uh, this week actually marks my three year anniversary of living here in Zimbabwe, which is pretty cool. So I wanted to do a video that kind of was an overview of the best parts of living here and the not so great parts that I've had to experience. Let's go. Okay, so we are gonna start with the pros or the best parts of living here in Zimbabwe. And these are in no particular order, but number one I would say is the locally grown produce and food that is here. So while we might not have the biggest selection of things, everything is fresh, organic, and delicious. Oh, Zeus wants to say hi. <laughs> Come here. Um, everything is fresh, locally grown, and you can always trace it back to where it was grown. So that's, I think that's pretty cool about living here. Number two, one of the best parts of living here, hands down, is the weather. Year round, the weather here is absolutely beautiful. It's winter right now and I'm sitting outside with a light jacket on and totally comfortable. It's sunny literally almost every single day of the year um, and if it does rain it's for like an hour and then it's gone. The weather here is unreal. I thought I wouldn't like living in a hot climate. It's never excruciatingly hot unless you're like in the dead sun with no shade for hours then you're gonna get really hot um, but otherwise the weather here is absolutely beautiful pretty much every day of the year. I would say another huge pro to living here is having more downtime to spend with family and friends. This culture as a whole I would say is very focused on family and is so laid back. Now it might be a con that there's not much to do or hustle bustle, some people might really like that, but this is the perfect place to relax, hang out with your family, and on a Sunday at 2 o'clock almost everything is going to be closed. People are gonna be home hanging out with their families. That's just what it's like here. Six, seven o'clock at night, most of the stores are closed and everybody's home having dinner and going to sleep. People go to bed early, wake up early here. That's just the way of life. Um, and I've really become used to getting to see family all the time and getting to see friends a lot. And it's really nice just to be able to relax and enjoy each other. Well, I've talked about this before, but literally anywhere you go, someone is going to greet you with a smile or help you if you ever need help with anything. It's so nice to know that regardless of where you go or what happens, there's always going to be people looking out for you and just looking out for their neighbors, making sure everybody's safe, everybody's good. People here in Zimbabwe are the friendliest people I've ever met across the board. Another huge pro I would say definitely is safety. Um, and this is something that people might be kind of surprised to hear is a is a pro of living here But safety is really good here, um, especially if you're comparing it to next door South Africa Zimbabwe is an extremely safe place Really, the only kind of crime here is like petty theft and really the goal is never to harm the person they're stealing from um, not that that makes it any better, but um, you don't have to fear for your life here. There are very few weapons and most people just want to live in peace and harmony. So it's a really peaceful and safe place to live. Um, and because it is Africa, people still take precautions. So people have barbed wire fences, everybody has own security systems, you can get security cameras. So things like that are not an issue here and you can feel really safe and confident. A huge pro is the nature and just absolute beauty of this country. I have always loved the outdoors, traveling, adventure, things like that, but the natural beauty here is unreal. The plants, the trees, the waterfalls, the animals, you name it, it's here. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to explore that side of Zimbabwe and just seeing the raw beauty that is everywhere. That, going off of that wildlife here, I mean, you see in zoos, uh, growing up, I used to see elephants and giraffes, 
but there's something so different to seeing that in a, in a caged uh, artificial environment and then seeing that in nature just in their wild habitat there it, it is so cool um, getting to see some of these majestic animals just in their natural habitat it's, it's really a special experience if you are an outdoor junkie, adrenaline junkie, activity, uh, like very active person, Zim is an awesome place for you. You can ride your bike everywhere. There's people who run and exercise. Um, you can go take a boat to the lake. You can rent a boat for the day. You can go fishing. Uh, there are lots of things to do and Vic Falls is actually nicknamed like the adrenaline capital um, Because there's so many cool activities. You can go white water rafting. You can go bungee jumping Zip lining. I mean, there's several zip lines throughout the country. You saw check out my last video here I'll link it uh, Mutarazi Falls Skywalk. You can go do that There are so many cool things that you can do here that really get your blood pumping and get you outside so it's really fun to do that, Tatinda and I have done whitewater rafting. I went once, he's done it twice, I believe. Um, it was so cool, it was a really fun experience and just so cool to be out in nature and getting to do that stuff. Another huge pro is the houses here are usually, if you buy like a plot of land and you build a house, they can be as far apart from people as you want and everybody has their own fenced in area with a big wall and a gate so no one can see into your yard kids can run around dogs can run around you can have as many animals as you want i think that was the coolest thing i was like oh my gosh you can have three dogs if you want like in america that's really tough to do um you have to have like a huge yard and people here have massive yards with trees and flowers and just amazing beautiful green grass so i thought that was a really cool cool part of that um, and you can build a house here and kind of make it however you want for the price of rentals i would say you get way more yard and garden space here than you would in like a big city in america um, and you really just get to enjoy the outside okay one of my last pros would be the ability to start a side business or get creative here. Zim's economic struggles force a lot of people to get creative or have a side business. And while this may be stressful while you're doing it, I think the environment in Zim really pushes people to create their own small businesses and be their own entrepreneurs. And I think it's a really unique environment and really challenges you to be uh, creative and think outside of the box so I think that's a really cool pro of Zim um, and it's really pretty easy to get started selling things or creating things or making things into a business here okay now I'm gonna talk about the not so great parts of Zim so obviously living in a third world country there's going to be political struggles and political turmoil when I moved here in 2017 the government was just recently overthrown in a coup now I didn't think too much into this because my husband my now husband was here he and his family were safe there was no immediate danger so maybe I should have done a little bit more research but I knew that currently I was going to be safe. The political tension and political struggles here can be scary. Um, it depends how active you want to be in those political struggles. Zimbabwe is an absolutely gorgeous place, um, but I don't think there is much room to disagree with the politicians, unfortunately. That's just the climate that we live in currently. Another con would be corruption. <laughs> corruption is rampant, unfortunately, and this is not just for Zimbabwe. This is a lot of Africa, unfortunately, and a lot of third world countries. Um, a lot of times people will expect you to pay for things that should be free or should be part of their job responsibilities and duties. And unfortunately, due to corruption, they expect extra money or extra favors on top of those things to get the job done. The third thing, chaos when trying to do anything kind of formal. So right now, I think if you go to the passport office, there's a several month, if not year to two year long wait to get a new passport. Driver's license, people are waiting months, years. Um, 
I, when I first moved here and I wasn't married to my now husband, I was going to immigration very frequently and trying to do that uh, was kind of a nightmare <laughs> trying to figure out the paperwork and which department to go to and did you lose my paper file um, are all real concerns so that was really hard you know in America I'm used to everything's electronic everything's online of course we have your file uh, here that's not how it works when I was applying to the nursing council of Zimbabwe my sister-in-law God bless her stood in line for like almost a whole entire day with my paperwork to try and submit it for me while I was still in America um, because that's how long the line was to submit paperwork um, and then it took months to get processed because they literally have paper files that they're creating for people um, so any kind of official paperwork or documentation is a struggle here <laughs> another con to living here is that Zimbabwe imports almost everything so unfortunately we don't have much manufacturing or much going on with our economy so we have to import a lot of goods you want brands that are familiar from the UK or from the US you're gonna pay a hefty fee for that in addition trying to find clothes or ordering things online there are companies that help bring those goods in for you but it can be very expensive and you will pay heavy heavy import fees even bringing a car into the country from a border post like South Africa or um, you know some of these other options you will pay a hefty hefty fee for that so it's better to just kind of get used to the things that are available here in Zim and every once in a while if you're dying for something that reminds you of home or you really need something you can import it but runners are people who bring goods from South Africa for a fee um, that can also get expensive they usually charge 30% of the item um, so I try and stay away from stuff like that but you can either find stuff locally for a more expensive price or like I said just kind of save it for the one-off opportunities that you're really missing something from home the other thing this kind of goes along with corruption that isn't so great uh, would be having to pay people to get things done in a timely manner so there'll be the standard processing fee and then there'll be an expedited fee so if you want to get your let's say police clearance done in a week you'll pay a certain fee if you want it done in three days you'll pay a different fee um, so that part is a little bit frustrating I feel like in America we have one standard fee and that's just kind of how it is you know your document gets done in order of who submitted it first but that's not really the case here if you have more money you're usually able to get things done a little quicker and that doesn't seem fair it seems frustrating another con to living here would be Wi-Fi <laughs> our Wi-Fi is awesome um, we have Zoll Fibronics but it is insanely expensive like three times as expensive as you would pay in the US for unlimited Wi-Fi uh, we pay hundred and fifty dollars a month for unlimited Wi-Fi and now not everybody gets the unlimited package but we don't really have an option because I work from home my husband currently works from home um, we can't really compromise on paying that that fee unfortunately um, and companies here will do that like if they know they are the best they're gonna put their prices up super high because there's a monopoly there's no other competitors there are but they're not nearly as good as Zoll so they know that they can charge whatever they want and people will still pay it okay, another con would be and this is one that I would not have expected um, we always get afternoon rain showers and like I said it'll be like during rainy season it'll be like an hour or two hours a day and when I tell you just when you hang up your clothes to finish doing the laundry you're gonna get that rainstorm you can see the clouds coming in and I have to run outside and grab all the clothes before they get rained on um, that can definitely be a con all right a huge huge part of living in Zimbabwe is being able to deal with kind of the unpredictability so one of the cons would be the unreliable electricity so you never know if it's an actual issue like a fault or if it's just something that is load shedding meaning that there's not enough electricity to go around for the whole country so the past four days for example we've woken up every day with no electricity 
which you kind of get used to it. You have solar backup, most people have generators, you kind of make make a plan as people say. Just getting used to that, I think initially when we first moved out into our own house, um, we didn't really, we didn't realize the impact it would have. Um, and at the time, we were having load shedding up to 12, 15, 12 to 15 hours a day. So we would wake up, there was no electricity, we'd go to bed, there was no electricity. So the only time the electricity was there was at night when everybody was sleeping. Um, and that was simply just because there was not enough electricity to power the whole country. So we kind of just had to make it work. We bought our first inverter and a little battery and kind of just made it work. Uh, built up our solar system from there, but you gotta start small and with what's in your budget originally. Okay, one of the last cons is the infrastructure and the roads here. As you have seen in some of my previous videos, I'll link my traffic in Zimbabwe video here. Uh, the, the roads are not the best. There are lots of potholes. Um, driving is kind of crazy here. So if you can get used to that, then you'll be good to go. Um, but it is definitely a little bit hectic trying to go over the speed humps and not get a flat tire and not ruin your car. I will say I've lived here three years and have gotten two flat tires both in the last year. For two years, I think I did pretty good. And then this third year, I just happened to get two flat tires. <laughs> All right, my last con to living here in Zimbabwe is the money issue. So I've touched on it briefly before, but um, there are so many different currencies that are used here and that aren't recognized in other countries. It can be really difficult to go to the store and nobody has change for US dollars. So then they ask you if you can use a local currency. Do you have swipe, which is what they call it, and it's a debit card from your local bank, which is an RTGS. If you don't have swipe, do you have EcoCash? That's a mobile money. Um, sometimes you kind of have to be prepared and have a little bit of each. So you go with USD, you go with RTGS, you go with EcoCash. Um, so when I first moved here, that was a struggle to try and learn like, okay, you need to be prepared. You're gonna get to the grocery and they might not be able to take your money. You have to have kind of a backup. So that was really interesting, like having to learn the system and also be smart with your money. If you have US dollar, it actually might be cheaper depending on the rates at each individual shop for you to change that US dollar into RTGS or into EcoCash. There is a whole black market, which I do not condone, but it is real and it happens. Um, and on the black market is where the money is changed and that has its own unofficial rate. So currently that rate is at like 120, well, anywhere from like 115 to 120 right now equals one US dollar. But if you're going to, let's say, a random butchery and you ask them what is your rate today, they might tell you it's 120. A lot of times small shops or independent stores are gonna have similar to the black market rate. But if you go to a grocery, they use what's called a bank rate, which is the legal exchange rate through the bank and that's 85. So if you think about it, do you want 85 cents per dollar or do you want 120 cents per dollar? There's a huge gap there. It's almost a third more of a discount that you're getting if you have that 120 rate and you're using US dollar. So I've had to really adjust to that. I've gotten really good at my mental math um, and just focusing on what is the best to save the most money. All right, well those are my pros and cons of living in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was informative. Please leave comments down below. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you get notified next time I post another video. Thanks guys, see you next time.